Hi there, welcome to the Networking Made Simple podcast. I'm your host, Stefan Burchard, the Bowtie Coach. Networking Made Simple is an exploration of networking and social business connections for entrepreneurs, but especially for introverted entrepreneurs like me. It has taken me 24 years to get to the place where I'm comfortable to be on camera, a microphone, or in front of people. My journey is far from over. I have the same challenges I have always had as an introvert. I have just learned how to leverage those introverted traits into positive tools for building business relationships. This podcast is an exploration and sharing of those 24 years of experience, mistakes, and learnings. I will alternate between sharing from my own experiences and interviewing other entrepreneurs to learn from their journey. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hey there, welcome to the Networking Made Simple podcast, the podcast where we demystify the art of networking, especially for introverted entrepreneurs. I'm your host, the Bowtie Coach, Stefan Burchard, and I welcome you today. Today, I want to talk about the importance of accountability. So accountability can come in so many, many, many different forms. I'm not just talking about coaching, although primarily that's kind of the focus because that's where we get our greatest accountability. When we actually participate in a coaching program, whether it is a group coaching program or one-to-one coaching or even a course that involves a segment of coaching, we're held to a higher standard. And more importantly, we got skin in the game. We probably have to make some kind of a financial investment. And when we are investing in ourselves, then we're growing. We're going to take it seriously. We're going to do the work necessary to do whatever it is that we're trying to do. So. The importance of accountability is to hold us to our word. If we say we're going to do X and we don't do X, how are we going to do X next week or the week after that if we don't have somebody that says, dude, said you were going to do X and you didn't do X. What is in the way? What can we brainstorm so that next week you actually do X? That's like accountability partners, masterminds, having other people in your life that you have a regular phone call with and you hold each other to account. Um, we call we, I have one, we call it our warrior buddies. So it's our, or it's our warrior clan. So we meet on a regular basis every week and we talk about the previous week and then we plan the follow the, the ensuing week. And then we check in with each other during the week to see how are we doing. So that's one level of, of accountability. If you work for a company or like, for instance, if you're a real estate, a, a realtor and you have a broker, That's another level of accountability is actually speaking with somebody who, you know, holds you to account, says, hey, you need to do X or Y, and then they tell you how to do it, and then you go do it, and you can go follow back up with them to let them know, hey, you did it, or you share with them why you weren't a success, and hopefully you pick it apart to find out what you need to do so that you are a success next time. That is pretty common in the W2 world of, you know, working a regular nine to five job. Not my favorite, by the way, if you couldn't figure it out. Mentorship is really, really important. That is another form of being accountable. Similar to like, you know, that boss that works or that broker, if you're a realtor, it can also mentor you or somebody who's even more experienced because brokers got supervisory things they got to do. We really don't want to take up too much of their time unless we have something that we need their input on. What I mean by a mentor is somebody who's got umpteen years of experience, somebody that hopefully you respect and admire. Don't go with a mentor just because they've got a bazillion years of experience and somebody said you need a mentor. Go to a mentor because you like what they say. You like how they present themselves. You like how they do their job. You you are inspired. You're moved by them. You, you respect them. That is the mentor you want to work with. Not just because somebody's got umpteen years of experience. I don't know about you guys, but I know so many professionals that have umpteen years of experience, but they're either jerks, they're either idiots, they have a horrible time communicating, even worse, they have a horrible time listening to other people because more worried about what's coming out of their mouth than what's going in their ears. I run from those kind of people, not just with mentors, but in general, I don't want to work with people that are like that because they're draining and I don't have a very good experience, whether it's a transaction or whether it's going up for dinner. It doesn't matter. People who only want to talk about themselves are boring. So a good mentor is one who will listen to you, one that you can ask questions of, and then they hopefully will ask you questions to draw you out, to find out what's going on in your mind, your mindset, your heart, and to share their experience, strength and hope in their particular craft or whatever it is you're wanting mentorship from them on. That is gold. 
If you enjoyed this content and you would like more accountability in your life, check out my new membership, Limitless Ignite. It's an hour weekly Q&A where we talk about the things that matter and the things that get in our way in business. And I give you my take on it. And of course, we draw from other people in the room and it's recorded. So click on the link and find out more about it. Thanks. Now, for instance, I have a coach, Big Shock. I also consider her my mentor. I also have another, she was a former coach, but I consider her a mentor also in another area of my training and development and education. So I look to these individuals as mentors because they've been down that path before. They know what's coming up ahead. They have probably been in my seat. They've probably been exactly where I am and they can share with me what they did to get to where they are today. That's the essence of a mentor is I, I like to look at it as they're holding my hand and leading me and, you know, talking with me along the way. Now, a coach is a completely different type of accountability. That is where you're making an investment in yourself. You're not, it's not a cost. It's not an expense. It's an investment in yourself. And the coach's job is to take you from where you are to where you want to go. And along the way, they have, of course, experience and strengths in the areas, hopefully, that you're wanting coaching in. But more importantly, they help you see the blind spots. I don't know about you, but I don't know what I don't know about myself. And sometimes I get in the way, stick my foot in my mouth, or I just, I get in my own way, or it's my mindset, or it's my heart. There's something going on that just does not have me getting the results that I want to get. A good coach is going to pick that apart. A mentor is not going to pick that apart. They're going to say, go see your therapist or go talk to your coach. <laughs> so a good coach, that's their freaking job is to coach you in looking in the mirror and identifying what's in the way. What am I not seeing about myself and the way I'm doing whatever it is that I'm doing that's not allowing me to get the results that I need or want to get? That process of identifying those blind spots and then doing some steps to remove those blind spots and leverage your natural talents, skills, and abilities so that you don't have that blind spot anymore. You're not doing that thing that you do. And just in that, removing that one little piece sometimes catapults us into a much higher level of success and productivity. I know it does for me. Whenever I get something out of what's hidden back here, I make tremendous growth. So for instance, one of the things I've learned over and over and over again is to don't let the phone or computer distract me when I'm wanting to create stuff, create content, or when I want to focus. So I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of creating uh, video content, uh, audio content, et cetera, et cetera. I love to write. So in order for me to be effective at writing, I need long periods of focus, like 90 minutes or more. And the only way I can get that done is to shut out everything. Turn off the mobile phone, turn off notifications, get out of email because it is, it's a distraction. All of them are distractions and it takes us about 22 minutes once we shift focus to really get focus. So my point being is I didn't know what I didn't know about email and checking email on my phone and checking email on my computer because I couldn't stand that little number saying you've got 15 messages and I'd want to clear out that notification. So I was like, yay, I got to the bottom of my inbox. Well, the freaking inbox is never going to get to the bottom. It's just, it's always got emails being added to it. So when I finally realized that was part of my problem, turned off the email app, turned off the email app on my phone turn my phone face down so I don't see any notifications coming through, turn off notifications on my smartwatch as well, and just focus, focus, focus. I did a freaking lot of stuff done. It's amazing. And here's the big learning. When I go back to the email applications to check in, I, only do, I try to do email only three times a day, morning, noon, and night. So when I go back into email to see what happens since I've been, you know, taking a diet from email, there's usually not much there that I missed or that I need to pay attention to. Maybe one or two messages that are like, oh, okay, something I better pay attention to or take care of. So that was a big aha for me. So that was one of my blind spots was freaking email and all those little numbers on my freaking apps on my phone. So I turned off all those little numbers on my phone. I still get a uh, notification for the important ones, which to me are communication because I'm in real estate and business coaching. I need to see my email. I need to see my texts and my WhatsApps. So those kinds of things still give me a number, but they don't go bing, 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 bing on my phone. So I can glance at it and see, oh, I've got some messages I need to pay attention to. But I get to choose when. So it doesn't disrupt my, my focus. 
I just focus when I need to focus. So that is a really good example of blind spots. And, you know, Coach K helped me see that. She helped me uncover that the phone, the apps, the the emails were getting in the way of me taking quality focus time and getting stuff done. So that is the beauty of a coach in identifying the blind spots so that we can move forward. So like I said, when I remove those blind spots and I shift my behavior or my activities or my processes based on uncovering that blind spot, wow, I am so much more productive. I get so much more done. I can record so much content in an hour. It's not even funny. As long as I've done the prep work, you know, writing the scripts, editing the scripts, all that fun stuff. I mean, setting up wherever it is I'm recording. Um, I can record a lot of content in an hour because I've done it so many times. I know how to get it done efficiently. So, and that's kind of another thing that the coaches bring to the table is lots of experience because we have tread down the path that you are wanting to tread down. So we can help you get there. I've gone from being that, shy, depressed, introverted, reluctant entrepreneur to who I am today. A calm, confident professional who's awesome at networking and marketing, whether it's digital marketing, video marketing, uh, audio marketing, or shaking hands and kissing babies, as I call it. I love to network. I love to market. I love to grow. And I also love to teach. So that's one of my gifts as well, is being able to teach and help others. So that's it for today the power and value of accountability. And we talked about several different levels. Thanks for listening. To learn more about Networking Made Simple, make sure to subscribe and leave us a review. Hey, you may even enjoy my YouTube channel at Bowtie Coach. Thanks for listening. And I hope you'll join me on the next episode. Bye.